Joining me now is Kermit Roosevelt III, constitutional law professor at the University of Pennsylvania Law School and author of the book, The Nation That Never Was, Reconstructing America's Story. Professor Roosevelt, good to see you again. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Let me ask you about... Um, the, the decision by liberal justices on the court uh, siding with the, the right uh, with the issue of the, the 14th Amendment. What do you make of that? Well, I think what we're seeing here, unfortunately, is that the court is really concerned about itself as an institution. So the court is kind of issuing these decisions out of a sense of self-preservation. Right? It knows that the American people are upset with what's been going on, and it's trying to appear apolitical. It's trying to look neutral. I think that's actually part of the explanation for why they took up the immunity case. So the court is trying to say, we're not interfering with democracy. We're just going to let the American people have the last word. And the problem is that in order to do that, it has read out of the Constitution a provision that's there to protect democracy. Right. So, for instance, um, I wasn't born in this country, so I'm, I'm disqualified from running. The court's not really in a position to say, let's just let the American people decide on that if the Constitution says that a, uh, a naturalized citizen can't be the president of the United States. Right. So, you know, you have to be a natural born citizen. You have to be 35. And I think the best comparison or the most telling one is you can't have been elected twice. So we take away from the American people the ability to choose someone who's won the presidency twice, shown that they can be a good president, because we think there's some risk that that person might become a dictator, right? They might not observe democratic rules going forward because they'll be too popular. And the risk that an oath-breaking insurrectionist is not going to observe the rules of democracy going forward is obviously much greater. That's a choice that we have taken away in our Constitution from the American people. But the Supreme Court seems to want to ignore that. It's a common uh, refrain that people accuse uh, judges, uh, Supreme Court justices, who don't share their political opinion uh, of judicial activism. You've said that that phrase isn't helpful because what it doesn't distinguish between is sort of activism or advocacy versus extremism. Yeah, so I think it's very hard to figure out what people mean by activism most of the time. And so the question that I think you should ask is really, is the court doing what a court should do? Is it acting in a way, is it answering questions that courts are good at answering? And this is a question, right? Who is qualified to be on the ballot for president that absolutely is within the competence of courts? And the Colorado court, to its credit, tried to answer that question. But what the Supreme Court has said now is basically you're not going to get a judicial answer. No one, you know, we're not going to decide that question, even though it's our job. And I think it's doing that out of a sense of institutional self-preservation, which is bad because the court should not be trying to defend itself. The court should defend America. The court should defend the Constitution. The court should defend democracy. But I really think that at this point, the court is worried about itself. And that's a tricky one, right? When, when, when you say the court should not have to defend itself, it's the same as any institution that is attacked. There is an instinct to do so. But when that instinct causes the court to not do the right thing, uh, it's self-perpetuating. People, people who didn't trust the court will trust the court less. Yes. You know, I, I think the court is not doing its job now. And it's an interesting question why it's not doing its job. One answer would be it's been taken over by the MAGA extremists. I don't think that that explains a majority of the justices, maybe a couple of them. But I think the more powerful explanation is they're trying to win back some popular support. So I think the reason they took this immunity case probably is they want to decide something against Trump. Right. They say he can stay on the ballot. But now they're going to say he doesn't have this crazy total immunity that he's claiming. And they're going to try to present themselves as a balanced institution, just being a fair referee. Kermit Roosevelt, good to talk to you again. Thank you for being with us. Kermit Roosevelt III is a professor uh, at the University of Pennsylvania Cary Law School and author of the book, The Nation That Never Was.